Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com and welcome to This Week in Prophecy. Uh, this week's topics, we've got the Abraham Accords are back in the news, global inflation, Aussie social credit, Saudis in China, euthanasia, and respect for marriage. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, Psalm 122 verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, may they be secure who love you. <clears throat> Dateline, Rome, Italy, the Abraham Accords uh, Global Leadership Summit was completed from December 7 to December 9, here just a few days ago, actually about 10 days ago, 8 days ago. Uh, the conference was introduced on the first day. The focus of the conference was to fight discrimination and build economic peace through strengthened political ties. The second session was called Combating Hate, Creative Strategies. The third session was titled Economic Peace. And to close, 30 countries signed off on the summit with an agreement to a, quote, family values pledge. And we'll take a look here at the article. Um, this is I-24 News out of Israel. Again, Abraham Accords Summit focuses on fighting hate, building economic peace is the title. Uh, pretty much, I just um, just provided a summary or an overview of the article. There are some anecdotal stories here. Um, people talking about different things. Not a whole lot in it. I did want to scroll down. Um, you know, at the signing, here's the 30 participants. Former Israeli ambassador to the UN, Danny Danon, or Danny Danon signs the Abrahamic Values Pledge at the Abraham Cor Accords Global Leadership Summit in Rome, Italy. I know some of you folks will get a little excited by the fact that this did take place in Rome. Um, and it is worth noting, I had some people make some comments on it, some of the social media sites, in regards that it did take place in Rome and that this was happening. I know many people think that the uh, end times beast and antichrist will come from Rome. I think that remains to be seen, uh, whether or not, but... I'm open to that. I'm listening to that. I'm not going to say it's not the case, but um, interesting nonetheless. So uh, did want to share that with people who are interested. A link's going to be provided for this article as well as any other article throughout this report. Um, now, personally, this is conjecture on my part. Fully admit it. I suspect any future covenant or treaty or peace treaty signed um, is going to focus in and around the seven Noahide laws. Those are kind of universal laws that were written coming out of the ark. Time will tell on that, but I do think there will be some consensus in and around the Noahide laws, just as there is consensus with Father Abraham in the sense of the Abraham Accords. Um, just seems to be makes sense how these things are going to work themselves out, um, and you know, in in that light, you know, we, we start talking peace. Um, Pew Research Center indicated approximately two in five Americans believe we are living in the end times. Evangelicals and Black Protestants were the most likely to believe in the imminent concept, and I love it. <clears throat> Eschatology experts, those who study the end times, have also weighed in, and they explained how this era we are living is not the end of the world. So, uh, quote, Christian researchers, credible ones, of course, don't sweat it. This is not the end. We're not getting close to the end, which to me means you need to have your uh, <laughs> antenna up. <laughs> In fact, the experts are telling you something. You need to be looking the other direction. I will remind everyone, the official expert, all caps, the official expert, has told us to be ready at any time. Just saying. I know what he said. I'm going to listen to him instead. Uh, and I would be one of those uh, two and five, near 40% 40, 40 who think we are living in the end times, uh, too much going on for that not to be the case. So 
Again, here's an article at uh, foxnews.com. We uh, we got Franklin Graham out to discuss it. Uh, for you want for those of you who want to take a deeper look, go to this a Pew Research study. Click on the link. You can get into more specifics. But pretty much the guts of it from you know from my standpoint. For those of you who are into statistical analysis, you might enjoy this a little bit more. And look at some of the things that were discussed. It was a very comprehensive study it involved the environment and the earth and climate change and some other stuff. And then they tied it in. Is this the end times? Is this what the Bible's talking about? And blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. Um, you know, and, 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 and this is, this is a fact. I, I would agree w- with this too. Christianity quickly diminishing in the United States on pace to become a minority religion. Uh, more and more fall away every day. Um, and again, click on this if you want to know why Christian scholars who study in time say this is not the end of the world. Okay. Uh, may not be. I don't know. Do your own homework. Interesting stuff. Um which takes us to Revelation 6, verse 6, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and wine. So for those of you who are new to the uh, the website and this week in prophecy, it is uh, my opinion we are not in the tribulation. And one of the hallmarks of the early the early aspects of the seven-year tribulation will be hyperinflation. And that's what this verse in Revelation 6, verse 6 is talking about. So a denarius back in the day, you know, roughly 2,000 years ago, was a day's wage. And so a quart of wheat is what was taken for a loaf of bread to feed a family. Three quarts of barley, you could get a little bit more food. Three, Three times as much food, that was a cheaper grain. And do not harm the oil and wine. Uh, so leave the rich alone as some would, would interpret that. Um, but the average person, you know, the working person and the poor, uh, hyperinflation to the point where it's going to cost a day's wage for you to eat. And that said, global inflation continues to take its toll. I got this chart from, um, oh, zero hedge and it takes a look at you know we pretty much have double digit inflation through a significant portion of the globe i do want to focus on the real big hot spots and it is interesting that a lot of these these areas are in and around israel or have prophetic significance uh in the end times um iran down here at the bottom, top 10 highest inflation rates. Iran has experienced 52% inflation. Turkey, another end times uh, participant that's noted in scripture, 85.5% inflation. And this is year over year inflation. So it's, you know, 85%, things are 85% more than what they were last year. Sudan, arguably from Ezekiel 38 and 39, things are double from what they were a year ago. Israel's neighbor to the east, Syria, 139%. Uh, Israel's neighbor to the north, Lebanon, 162%. I saw a report today. I think the uh, exchange rate for the uh, Lebanese lira, $1 for every 43,000 lira. I mean, it's just getting crushed. That's, I mean, that number just keeps spiraling higher. Uh, the Sudan, which we covered that one, but all of these uh, countries in and around, and then Russia seems to be doing pretty good because the ruble's appreciating. Uh, I would expect them to get stronger as this process uh, moves forward uh, prior to their invasion, Russia and friends, their invasion of Israel that's coming at some point in the future per Ezekiel 38, 39, I'd suspect their economy is going to continue to do stronger. They're tying their currency to commodities. Uh, Things are worth more. Pretty straightforward. Uh, Ukraine, uh, where was Ukraine? They're experiencing 26.6% inflation. But Europe, you know, they're they're taking a, a pretty good hit across the board, near double digits across the board in, in Europe. And here in the United States, 
you know, what's that, 7.7%. And I think that was that number's down a smidge down to around 7.1%. And again, that's year over year. You know, people were jumping up and down and Wall Street was excited. Yay, inflation's going down. Well, the rate of inflation is going down. We are still 7.7% higher in costs than what we were a year ago. I mean, just because the rate of inflation is going down, it's, you know, prices are still going up. I just you know, be wary of that nonsense when they start talking about that. But the hardcore inflation, again, most of these countries in and around Israel and tied to the end times scenario. So uh, just not a good look around the planet. Of course, with more geopolitical instability, things are at risk for increased inflation. So if you are interested in this chart, Provided a link here from Zero Hedge. Click on that. You can get a really good look at it. This is what it looks like right here. Um, and if you want, you know, you can increase it, make it a little bigger. You can do this with a lot of stuff. I get a lot of feedback. Uh, I don't like this website. You can't, you can't read it. You can't see it. You can increase this right up here with your little magnifying glass. Plus, minus, gets bigger, smaller, smaller, bigger. Um, Read it a little easier. I know I do that quite a bit. Eyes aren't what they used to be. But nonetheless, again, Zero Hedge chart. Good stuff. I like Zero Hedge. They put out a lot of good, interesting things. Um, but back to inflation, and even the 12 days of Christmas have been impacted by inflation. Uh, <laughs> this is from pahomepage.com. This is out of Pennsylvania. What the 12 days of Christmas will cost you with 2022's inflation. Uh, this was put out a couple of days ago. This was kind of fun. So I did I did uh, copy paste and, uh, you know, the, the 12 items. We can get into the specifics of that. It's more than just the 12 items because, you know, you sing the song. and You end up buying 12 partridges in a pear tree so 12 partridges and 12 pear trees so it's more that's just if you do it one time you know the cost of the uh the song is up 10.5 percent as compared to last year but if you actually look at what you would have to buy singing this song you have to buy 12 partridges 12 pear trees um so that'd be two turtle doves times 11 times you repeat that. So that'd be 22 turtle doves. You get the, you get the flavor of this. And I don't know who, who decides seven swans of swimming. The price of a swan did not change. I mean, to me, uh, no, I guess it'd be for me, the six geese Elaine, those should be going down in price. I, I'm, I've got a problem with the goose personally. And I think the price of a goose should be deflating and should not be worth as much as it was last year. These things are a menace to gardens, lawns, and golf courses, specifically golf greens. Not a big fan of the geese, Elaine. They tear stuff up. Uh, nine ladies dancing. I don't know if they checked any gentlemen's clubs to verify this. The price has only gone up 10%. We're buying nine ladies dancing. I don't know if this is a lease or rent type of deal or what the deal is. Ten lords of leaping. You know, we're getting into to people and purchasing people in some of these. Um, you know, just some thoughts. Gold. Where's the gold? Gold's up 39%. That one's pretty easy to uh, monetize, measure. Anyhow, I digress. Inflation is a global problem and will continue to be a problem. For those of you interested, here's the link to the pahomepage.com. 12 days of Christmas will cost you 2022's inflation. And again, the reason we look at this has to do with, um, it's one of the hallmarks at the initial point of the <clears throat> tribulation. You know, a day's wage to eat, and we're not there yet here in the United States. But we are trending. Inflation is increasing. And it's something we're going to be watching. Uh, also, a little bit of a transfer here. We're going to go down under to Australia. Australia's government looks to stop social media trolling and bullying. 
cannot have that. Uh, this is from Bernie's tweets. Look her up on uh, Twitter. Australia social credit introduced to access the net internet via your digital ID. Citizens need 100 points of identification to use social media, and the police will have access to your accounts, including private messaging. This is over the top. Now, she put this out. I would recommend you guys take the time to listen to this. This is a news story in regards to what the Australian government uh, is proposing. However, uh, I do want to take you up here. Uh, this is fun. You know, and this person, Bernie, said, uh, let's t- talk a little bit about Bernie. She has experience in lots of things, including board and CEO, internet protocol, patents, global manufacturing. She writes the odd article. Now, Bernie was um, cited. Now, Elon hasn't cleaned all of this up yet because we still have these little things showing up. And this little thing was brought to our attention by the fine folks who, you know, the truth detectors over there at Twitter. This was included as one of 88 recommendations by a parliamentary parliament, par, parliamentary committee aiming to curb bullying and domestic violence. The report was issued in April 2021 under the Morrison government, that's Prime Minister Morrison of Australia, and the measure has not been enacted. So let's just not get carried away and mislead people. The truth detectors are here to remind us. So for those of you, and I know you're out there, who want an Australian government-approved fact-checked link to the news article and accurate content of the policy, click on this link below, and we will go to that link, you know, in the name of fairness and fact-checking, provide accurate information here, Paul the Pope. Government could require you to hand over your passport to tech companies before posting online in a move that's been slammed by experts. I mean, so in, in effect, if I was in Australia and this thing passes, uh, (laughs) <laughs> they, they would want my personal ID. I wouldn't have the freedom to sit here and talk from my own brain. Uh, the Morrison government will consider a radical measure to prevent online bullying and trolling. Experts say proposal would involve serious risks for social media users. Government is considering forcing users of Twitter Facebook and Instagram. I'm on all three of these. I'd be in trouble. And also you folks who like to hook up out there on Tinder, you would need a hundred points of identification to utilize Tinder. And then big brother would know who, who you're hooking up with, you know, and theoretically if hooking up, uh, for money exchange of goods would be considered as prostitution in some cases you could be arrested and they could track you and know what you're getting ready to do all you freedom lovers out there better think about this um this is one of 88 recommendations click on this link if you want to read the specifics of this i'm not going to um but you can if you want to provided a link to this article and you can click on this to read uh, more stuff in order to open or maintain an existing social media account open or maintain customers should be required by law to identify themselves to a platform using 100 points of identification in the same way as a person must provide identification for a mobile phone account or to buy a mobile SIM card. Holy cow. Just for storage. Uh, social media platforms must provide those identifying details when requested by the e-safety commissioner. Great. People are not happy about this. I'm. You want to read more. And again, this is from news.com.au, a government approved website and source of news in regards to the 100 points of ID to get on Facebook, Tinder, 
Twitter, etc. Mm. <clears throat> Moving on. Ancient Sheba and Dedan meet with Revelation 9. And so, you know, again, tying this into the end times, ancient Sheba and Dedan, that would be modern day Saudi Arabia. We know that from Ezekiel 38 and 39. They're going to stand by at some point in the future when Russia and friends decide to invade Israel from the north. Ancient Sheba and Dedan are just going to stand there and question Russia and friends like, hey, you just doing this to steal and plunder? Is this all for economics? Uh, meet with Revelation 9's 200 million man army. Well, there's one of two options, China or India. My, uh, my bet at this point is China, but if the facts change and it looks like it's going to be India, my opinion will change at some point too. But nonetheless, uh, would appear to be China with all the maneuvering they have going on with geopolitics. And this took place in the middle of the of, at the capital in Saudi Arabia. Chinese President Xi Jinping recently traveled to Saudi Arabia to meet with Mohammed bin Salman. Thirty billion with a B worth of deals were signed. Thirty four deals struck between Chinese and Saudi firms are in green energy. You know, when I think green energy, I think of these two people, these two countries. Information technology, cloud services, transport, construction, and other sectors. Now, the thing that was fascinating to me about this, you know, not only did, uh, well, one, Xi got out of China. And he hadn't left China a whole lot since COVID, but he wanted to make the trip here to the Middle East and check out uh, Mohammed bin Salman in Saudi Arabia. Well, while he was out, multiple other Middle East leaders made the trip to Riyadh. They wanted to see Xi. They want to do business with China. And these include uh, Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, Sudan, which, you know, that is one uh, coup after another, Abdul Fattah al-Burhan. He's ahead. He's in charge for now. Tunisian President Qais Saeed. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed al-Sudani, Moroccan Prime Minister Aziz Akhan Nauch, 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 your guess is as good as mine, maybe better, and Lebanese caretaker. That's another, another con- country that's in just absolute turmoil from a leadership standpoint with a currency spiraling out of control and an economy spiraling out of control. Nobody wants to be in charge in Lebanon. And the caretaker Prime Minister Najib Makati is the latest to try to grab the reins of that. And the take-home, the take-home comment of this is from uh, Xi Jinping of China. China and Arab states will continue to hold high the banner of non-interference in internal affairs, supportly, firmly support each other in safeguarding sovereignty. Okay. Bottom line, they're going to be doing business, and they're going to be buddies. Um, for a link to this, we will go to Middle East Eye. Uh, very interesting article. Worth the read. I think this topic is worth the read. It's a big deal. And they've been doing business. Where was uh, – I think that's further down. But one of the things I didn't talk about as I posted this uh, – the Saudis, how they traded, how they treated Xi versus how they treated President Biden. <clears throat> Xi enjoyed an escort from the Saudi Air Force jets, a 21 gun salute, and the accompaniment of the Saudi Royal Guard riding Arabian horses and carrying Chinese and Saudi flags in a grand display of pomp and pageantry. Didn't happen when Joe showed up in the Middle East. Um, very pleasant. You know, we couldn't do that when, when Biden showed up. We had to do some little fist bumps and whatever. Now, this is fascinating. In 2021, two-way trade between China and the Saudis totaled $80 billion in 2021, $27 billion in the third quarter alone of 2022. So what's that? 54 times two, you're looking at 108 billion on an annualized basis. 
and then we sign deals for another thirty billion. <clears throat> That's a lot of cash exchanging hands between these two countries. Um, and we're stepping away. We're losing influence. China is, and again, every place the United States takes a step out, prophecy stepping in. That's been the way of the world. You know, and this started with Obama. We don't want to be the policemen of the world anymore. Um, and so we're, we're backing out away from the world stage and especially in this part of the world in the Middle East, um, is what it is. Um, Excellent article. Highly recommend other people looking into this this topic as well. Uh, China is is becoming a major global player. I mean, they have more business deals around the world than what we do. It's just that's that straightforward. They got their their fingers and everything around the planet. I'm uh, going to transition to John one verses one through five. I want to focus on the concept of life here. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, of the opinion, the word is Jesus himself. It's one of his names. Also, he's named that specifically in Revelation. He, the word, Jesus, was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. So life, and apart from him, the word, Jesus, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. So he is critical to the formation of life. He is the life giver. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not grasp it, and does not grasp it, and is turning away. So the one who has life in him imparted life to what we know, the creator of life, uh, the creation, aspects of the creation are taken out the creation. So in 2021, over 10,000 Canadian citizens were euthanized. Here's a link to the article. This is from Daily Mail out of the UK. America be very afraid, astonishingly, Canada is now euthanizing 10,000 of its citizens per year. Um, this is some of this stuff is crazy what what they're wanting to do what what they're doing. Um, and a lot of these are anecdotal stories of people who've been euthanized. You know, Canadian Army veteran, Paralympian. This guy was hard of hearing, close to deaf. He's no longer with us. One health condition, hearing loss is a reason, but that was enough to satisfy his keepers and he was killed. And here's the, here's the trend and trajectory of assisted suicides, euthanasia in Canada, 2016, less than a thousand, you know, two years later, up to four and a half, 4,500 ish. And then here we are, 2021, we've hit 10,000. So, I mean, a tenfold increase in the last, what, six years? It's crazy. And, and it's increasing. Uh, and then it starts to talk about attitudes here in the United States about youth, euthanasia. Of course, we had Kevorkian back in the 90s. Um, public support says about 75% here in the United States. I mean, we are just cheapening human life. We just don't care. And we're, you know, well, what about the strain on society, the cost that it's going to take to keep these people alive? I mean, just the attitude toward it. And they're getting, you know, eligibility criteria for assisted suicide in Canada is changing. Um, person with a condition severe enough, death is intimate. That's how this started five years later. Person with a physical condition deemed intolerable, whatever that means, uh, a physical condition. And now we're looking to next year, a person with a mental condition deemed intolerable will qualify for assisted suicide euthanasia. I mean, and I think this is spot on disabled people who are being devalued as a result. Um, You 
we we just don't care about our fellow human being. We're 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 losing our way. You know, and this and, and somebody and it comes down to this. Twenty seventeen Canadian study suggested medically assisted dying could reduce healthcare spending in the country by as much as a hundred and thirty seven million dollars a year. And it's like, you know, some of these people are loved ones. And it all sounds good to some of these bean counters and ethicists who are looking out for the greater good of the planet. And of course, they don't ever think that these types of things, well, that's not going to apply to me. Well, one of these days, what if it does apply to you? And then you're not deemed worthy to take in oxygen or eat food. You know, what if you have loved ones that you care for and people care for you? And then you're deemed, uh, what's the term, intolerable. Sorry, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. I, it's just, it's crazy. You know, we are made in the image of God. He loves us. He gave us life. And we're trying to take it away on a massive scale. And we got a bunch of people out there who want to reduce the population. Just another example of it. You know, of course, it's for the greater good. Uh, won't cost as much money. We don't have to feed them. We don't have to medicate them. We don't have to provide care for them. Housing. I mean, they're just they're just taking up resources, as some people see it. It's what they think of their fellow human being. <clears throat> and I know some people, oh, they, they won't think that of me. Oh, yeah, just wait. They disagree with you. <clears throat> value life we need to value life more we were made in the image of god loved by god we are to love one another i'm done with that genesis 2 verse 24 therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh <clears throat> so you know, I mean, we talk about some of these things and it's just, it's, it's back to basics, you know, as, as far as this is concerned, you know, even from the previous story, God is the giver of life. And oh, by the way, God created life and God created a man and a woman. And Let's okay. So, so I'm hearing a lot about pronouns these days. Let's look at some pronouns as God writes about it. Therefore, a man shall leave, note the pronoun, his father, another pronoun, and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, woman, and they shall become one flesh. And the idea is they, they become close, they're, they're to be close to each other, supportive of each other, helpers of each other. Uh, and marriage is supposed to be good. Marriage was created for good. And they should be such good friends, close friends, that they are to cleave to each other. Cleave to his wife, his wife, pronoun. His pronouns are his, man's pronouns are his don't have him, but I think I can imply that. Um, and Jesus quotes this passage from Genesis in the gospel accounts in talking about marriage. And it's the, uh, the Greek word gamos, a wedding or marriage to bind or unite. And in the Bible, the context of marriage, a wedding, a binding, a uniting, is between a man and a woman. Now, that said, the White House has lit up a rainbow tonight in celebration of President Biden signing the Respect for Marriage Act. And this is something the Democrats jumped on really quick when it became clear that they were not going to control the House. This got shoved right through the Senate. The House jumped on it, passed it, and Biden signed it into law. So, um, And I'm not going to spend any time on the cultural definition of marriage. Culture is doing a very fine job of this. They can speak for themselves. And I trust the good Lord will have a response. He usually does. We know what he, we know what he thinks on the issue. And, you know, in a lot of that, 
is, is just getting back to the basics of what, what does it actually say? What does the Bible say about these things? Fundamental truths that have been part of society for, gosh, thousands of years, and now we are living in a time where, you know, just basic definition of man, woman, husband, wife, these things are being redefined. Um, gender, uh, gender identification issues. And this has come up. I've had a couple of people point this out to me and I find this kind of fascinating as Rome was burning at the downfall at the end of the Roman empire, Rome is burning and the Roman Senate, they are having a discussion of gender issues. They are discussing the masculinity, femininity of angels. Um, a debate on gender in regards to angels. Is it, and is it, you know, we are following the path here in the United States of the Roman empire. As if you look at what, what happened with Rome, what caused their down downfall decline, um, we're, we're, history's repeating itself. Um, and as Rome was burning, a discussion on the gender of angels, gender identity. Here we are in the United States. We're having discussions of gender identity. Uh, things that, you know, at some point in time in the past appear to be pretty straightforward and clear. Well, not anymore. Uh, so, if you find any of these things interesting, please feel free to share with others at paulthepoke.com. Um, and while we're talking about these things down here at the bottom, um, you know, I am the messenger here reading these things. I happen to believe them. Therefore, a man shall cleave, shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. <clears throat> I'm, I'm the messenger. <laughs> if you got a problem with it, take it up with God, his ways, his ideas, his order. Talk to him about it. See what he has to say. Reach out to him. He'll listen. He'll respond. You may not like it, but he will respond. Uh, he'll hear you. And if you don't like the way things are going, you don't like the way things are defined. And if you disagree with some of his fundamental truths, take it up with him. Reach out with all sincerity. God, I want to talk to you. He'll listen to you. Probably respond, give you some feedback in ways you can't even begin to imagine. So at any rate, appreciate you guys following along. If you're interested in this, uh, these sorts of things, this is going to be filed under the category of Paul the Pope prophecy and trend update. Here's some of the SEO terms that we're looking at. And, um, Share with others. If you want to become a member, type your email address here in the gray box. Hit subscribe. You'll receive a notification every time we we send something out. Got a lot of stuff coming up here with Christmas in the next week or so. Going to pull out some old things from, oh, wow, going back six, eight years ago. Uh, got a lot of new listeners and followers and who haven't seen some of the content before. Pull out some of the, some of the things that... Uh, had good feedback on things that have been helpful in the past. Um, I do appreciate everybody following along. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and have a great holiday season. I'll take care. Bye.